Welcome everyone, this is Viking, and today we're going to do some aerial gunnery in the Spitfire. Now first let's talk about setting up for it. You kill your nav lights with that switch there in the up position. Then you turn on master arm, out is fire in is safe, so that's it. If you want to do a quick gun check, a short burst of 30 cal won't waste a whole lot of ammo and it will confirm that you've done what you thought you did. For the gun sight, uh, we're going to be fighting some unarmed uh, Focke-Wulf 190A8s and those have a wingspan of, a, I think, about 32 feet. Now, if we look at this guy here, it's got 40, unmarked 50, marked 60. This red thing is the minimum. 30 feet so if you get a little bit above that you're going to be pretty close to the wingspan of the Anton. The way I like to do it without having to squint is to set my range all the way down to nothing and if these two lines are the same protrude about the same into the reticle as these two lines you've pretty much nailed it. So if I set it to the minimum it encroaches a bit more. If I tap it that's about 33 feet and then I like to set the range to about 300 yards, which is roughly where your 30 cals will uh, meet and cross each other. Now, don't feel like you actually have to set that up. A lot of the time, I just eyeball the shot. But uh, basically, when the target's wingspan fits in there, you know that it's at a range where your 30 cals will converge right on it. Now, I've set up these uh, Focke Wolfs, these Antons, um, to have no ammo, and uh, and then I just disabled their RTB on out of ammo uh, criterion, and that lets me get some practice in without asking, uh, without actually risking anything. I've also left dot labels on. I try to fight without them, I really do, but I'm so bad at spotting, and it definitely won't look good trying to spot these things on with YouTube's video compression, you know, because those tiny little dots will just get averaged out. So little bit of cheating there. I kind of wish you couldn't see them through the through the, the can or through the um, the fuselage there, but it is what it is. Um, I like to just firewall the RPM lever. Um, this wastes a little gas and creates a little more heat than you would need, but it also means that you can do all of your speed management with just the throttle and have no worries about blowing a gasket. dive in on these guys. The, uh, the Antons are legendary for the, uh, for the sheer amount of punishment they can take. What we really, really want to see after we shoot them is a trail of vapor that has a faint sickly green quality to it. That's the fuel line. Once you've done that and you've gotten them to dump their fuel by putting holes in their fuel tank, then you've already won and it's just a matter of time. If the Anton were armed, I would probably stay behind it, behind it while the fuel uh, leaked out so that he wouldn't be able to come around on me. By the way, it's very, very easy to black out in the Spitfire. Be careful. You're always going to be able to outturn this guy. You can catch up whatever uh, angles you've lost by being cautious. As the saying goes... Um, yeah, okay. As the saying goes, uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. See, so you kind of... <laughs> oh, and that jolt right there, that was when I flew through the guy's wake turbulence. You can disable wake turbulence if you, uh, if you want to just sort of, you know, get used to this thing. Now we're going to go in lag pursuit. God, Really? He won't be able to maintain that speed as he gets closer to the ground. If we have to follow him down, we'll follow him down. Also, I, I should point out that I'm not good at this. Uh, so, I mean, if someone more knowledgeable tells you something different, by all means, believe them, not me. I'm just trying to get new people up to speed in the spit. And with a little bit of gentle lag pursuit, we're real close. The gun, the 30 cals won't converge. But uh, that's all right especially when your aim sucks I clipped him a little bit there and once you get really close 
that's when I open up with the 20s. You don't have a lot of 20 millimeter ammunition, so I like to, uh, wake turbulence. So I don't like to use the 20s unless I'm really sure of the shot. There we go. Fire is even better than the sickly smoke. I almost never get an Anton to catch fire. That guy's going nowhere. And because he's unarmed, I could break off and engage one of the other ones. Um, but if he were armed, I would stay behind him so that he isn't able to get a revenge shot away. Alright. I'm going to put the RPM lever back down to 2850. But once I start engaging the other guys, I will put the RPM lever all the way forward again. So that, as I said, all I have to think about is the throttle. Any hey, you guys see where those guys went? Because... I'm lost. Oh, there we go. This is why I use dot labels. I never would have guessed that they were all the way over there. To those of you who are good at spotting, more power to you, but I need this crutch, so I'm using it. Because the spit actually has a lower top speed than most of the opposition you'll face, it's generally a good idea to get well above them. There are certain exceptions to those rules, like uh, bombers with uh, upward-facing guns. You know, that, uh, that may not be your best approach. But the bombers that have upward-facing guns usually also have a belly gun. So you really got to take that one on a case-by-case -case basis. Just if the bomber has a blind spot for its guns, try to approach from wherever that is. Um, if you think the opposition is faster than you, start from above so you can get a dive on them. And if, uh, if they're not faster than you, approaching from underneath can be kind of good because it's really hard for them to see you. I mean, the AI will spot you no matter what, but in the event that you go into PvP, approaching from the enemy's blind spot is always advisable. Getting close, so RPMs to 3,000. Full super duper power. Emergency power. Gets a lot louder when you really firewall the throttle. And remember that full emergency power is only safe for five minutes. You can see the radiator heating up. The needle is, uh, is standing at the 12 o'clock position. Creeping over to one. Ease back to plus 12. Engine's cooling off already. Oil's still pretty hot. I'm getting a little concerned about that. Once that thing hits 100, you might be starting to have trouble. Maybe I'll just bring this down to 2850 for a little while. And I'm cheating with the labels. I'm looking through my engine to see the bad guys. If I were a little more scrupulous, I'd try to keep them, like, just... I'd approach from a bit of an angle so that I can see them out the side. Oh, wow, I'm closer than I thought I was. Reduce throttle. Let's see if they'll hold still enough for me to demonstrate the uh, that wingspan thing. Also, I'm like going to be flying right through their wake turbulence to do this, so I don't think it's going to work out, but I will give it a shot. That seems like we're roughly... Actually, no, not quite. Speed up.
And now we're at 30 cal convergence time. If you can get the drop on them like that, you're in a very good position. Now, as you can see, if, in order to pull enough lead to actually hit the guy, you have to hide him behind your own nose. So if you can get him to come, if you, if you can attack him as, as they're going sideways, basically, instead of from straight, straight behind them, that'll give you an advantage in that respect. I am really stinking it up out here. This is no good. Oop, got him a little bit there. Yep. If possible, because the 20s are so powerful, I'll just try and use up the 30s. Which is why I'm avoiding using the 20s. It's also a good warning for, uh, for being low on ammo. Once you run out of 30 cal, that means you've got... 10 to 12 seconds, or 10 to 11 seconds of 20 millimeter left. Ah, that wake turbulence, right? I like it when they start smoking, because then they're, you can see where their wake turbulence is. It's, it's the smoke, right? And that's it for the 30 cal. So I've, I'm just going to pause this here. Let's have a look at this guy. Not him. Yeah, him. I haven't given him any 20 millimeter, and I've perforated him pretty good. Ideally, that'll cause a fuel leak or something. Or maybe even snipe the pilot. I've done that once or twice. Just kill the pilot through the canopy. But now, it's no more sniping. It's getting right up in their face and giving her with the 20s. Don't want to take any long shots here. I just want to get real close, knock them out of the sky, but I also don't want to overshoot. And, oh, sideways shot. Come on, baby. Clipped him. Clipped him. I'm sure you've noticed that I'm kind of seesawing back and forth over the guy, and I'm doing that partly so that I'll fly through the wake turbulence and just get a little jolt instead of being absolutely devastated by it. I think I knocked something off there. But I'm not seeing that green fuel smoke, which I am hoping to illustrate at some point in this video. also want to keep the 20 mil bursts real short, because you do not have very much of that stuff. That's the ticket. Woo! That was a good one. Yeah, get out, buddy. That plane is not safe. I am not super optimistic about my ability to take out any more planes without reloading, but I will give it a shot. If I can find these guys. Temperature's actually looking really good here. I was being pretty conservative with the throttle. Okay. Where are my boys at? Where am I at? Uh, that lake looks like the port at Calais. Oh, there we go. I see one of the guys. They're supposed to be patrolling between Calais and Dunkirk. I know this because I built the mission. When you're doing this in a less predictable environment, they really could be anywhere. Also, I'm only seeing one of them, and I only shot down two, right? Yeah, there are two separate ones, so I have lost tally on one. If they were armed, I would be really concerned about that. 
but this is just gunnery practice. And I do recommend fighting against unarmed drones when, uh, when you're just starting out. You're going to overshoot, you're going to miss, um, and even for people who are good at this, taking on four at once is really hard. You'll focus on one of them, and the other three will focus on you. Also, Antons are... I mean, they have the most firepower of any flyable DCS Warbird. They, uh, they have a pair of 50s and four 20mm cannons. Does he ever get any closer to us? I'd love it if I could just dive down and get someone nearer, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Oh, I never turned on pitot heat in this flight. I'm not likely to go high enough to need it, but uh, it's one of those things that you want to fix beforehand. Now, these long chases can obviously get a little bit tedious, but they will only go as far as Dunkirk, then they'll uh, double back. Oh yeah, there's the other one. So the other one was actually further away than the one I've been ineffectively chasing. Anyway, yeah, do not let an Anton get the drop on you. It doesn't turn that well, and it's, you know, fast-ish, but uh, not fast enough to worry you. You'll always be able to keep up with it. Um, but, oh my goodness, if it gets a shot off on you, <clears throat> not going to not gonna go well. Bitfire is made of paper. It can take a little bit of punishment in the wings and stuff, but... Uh, Pretty much anything they hit is going to be important, and they will hit it hard. And again, I should really try to pretend that I can't see them through my own aircraft. Here they go, coming back. We'll let that first guy go because we do not want to get into the habit of jumping in front of our target's wingman. That's just a good way to get killed. Diving won't save you. I'm just as happy down low as you are. Although, oh man, okay, I just hit 440 miles per hour. 450 will overspeed it and could damage the wings. Um, I doubt it would rip them clean off right at 450, but I mean, if you find yourself getting up around 500, you're in a lot of trouble. Holy cow! Three? I set three of them on fire. I can never set these guys on fire. Sometimes I just empty everything I've got into them, perforate every surface they have, and, uh, and it still takes them a while to go down. I was really sure I was going to get to show you the, the green fuel that you're looking for to indicate a uh, fatally wounded enemy that no longer needs to be shot at, and I guess there's still a chance. I don't know how much 20 millimeter I have left. I bet it's not much. I bet it's about, like, three seconds worth. But I will valiantly carry on, see if I can finish this. What are we doing for temperature? We're doing great for temperature. That engine is in no danger. Let's try and trim this so I can go hands off, at which point it will be relatively safe to uh, speed up time.
don't make any adjustments if you can avoid it when time is sped up because you can really screw things up. Getting close. You know what? The, the temperature is just fine. I'm going to go ahead and go emergency power. Once again, I am cheating. Let's put that guy where I can actually see him. That's, uh, I think that's Kelly down there, right? Let's just give ourselves a view. Yeah, there's that telltale lake there with its telltale shape, and also the canal system. All right, boost down to plus 12, engine RPMs to 2850. You're not supposed to fly past Calais, man. Oh, okay, there's his turn. RPMs to 3,000, so I don't have to think about it. Back off the throttle. I'm going to try and come in from beneath this guy. Stay out of his propeller wash. Ooh, knocked an aileron off. Nice. Wake turbulence curses. Oh, man. Well, that was incompetent of me. Lost sight of him. I overshot. If he had any bullets at all, that would have been the end of me. Keep him in sight. Keep him in sight. Oh, little stutter there. Feeling good about this. Ah, another overshoot. I suck. Where'd he go? Don't lose sight of the bandit, kids. That's, uh... That's not the recipe for winning. And also, don't, like, really lose sight of the bandit. <laughs> I have no idea where this guy went. Alright, let's loop around, see what we can see. Surely he didn't die. I bet you're watching this and like you've spotted him like three or four times and I can't see anything. Those those ones off in the distance are U-boats. Those red dots, those aren't the those aren't the droids we're looking for. Yep, still alive.
Where is he? He's right over Kelly. All right. There we go. Temperature is doing fine. Can afford to put some pepper on this. And back it off. And just try to. Yeah, I'm going way too fast here. If I had 30s, I'd probably use them to harass him a little bit, but given that we're so very low on ammo and so close to taking out all four, I didn't think we would, and we might not. still have a chance, I think. I'm gonna hit wake turbulence. If I go any higher. I'm gonna try and swoop up, hit him in the belly. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Alright, never did see the green smoke. That surprises me. All of the practice sessions I did for this, at least one of them had green smoke. It's not that green. Like, it's it's a very pale sort of, uh, sort of green color. Um, against the sky or next to... Like, if he has a blown radiator and the fuel leak, you'll be able to tell that it's got a, a hint of green to it compared to the bright white water vapor coming out of the radiator. And it's also uh, like a really thin stream, you know, like the, there's, there's like the black billowing smoke and then there's this little trickle of white, very slightly green vapor that indicates a fuel leak. Let's lose a little speed and kill the master arm and turn the lights on. And as always, we uh, we want to wait for it to get beneath 160. Pardon me, 150. 150 for flaps and gear. And even though there's sort of a tendency to, to dive a little bit here on approach, just watch your speedo as you do it, because the last thing you want to do is overspeed the flaps and gear. 12 or 120 is uh, what we're going to try and maintain on approach. That's 100. Really cutting it close here. And we will cut throttle at this point. Try to touch down at 80, and just before I touch down, flaps up is a trick that I sometimes use to avoid bouncing. Especially when I'm coming in a little bit hot. I'm using a little bit of wheel brake here. I don't think you're supposed to, but it slows me down a little bit. It keeps me on track. 
And yeah, I overran the airfield, and that's a big deal in a jet, and not that big a deal in a spit. Man, it dragged a wing again. And that is a fun little aerial gunnery exercise in the Spitfire. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers. See you next time.